This has been quite a year. There have been a lot of uncertainties. So we wanted to give you a weekly update on our church's 2020 ministry funding campaign. To ensure a balanced budget, our goal for pledges this year is $550,000. So far, we have received $377,511 towards funding all of the amazing work of our church. Last year, at this time, we had in about $439,000. We get it. Church is different this year. Life is different this year. But even though we're separate, we're still on this journey together. And this new path that we're on, we think that it could lead to something really special. So if you haven't already had a chance to pledge, we hope that you'll join us. We're looking to receive all remaining pledges by the end of November so that we can start to plan what we want this next year to look like. Pledge today. Visit fccb.net slash giving where we are giving to reimagine what we know and grow what we love by innovating church and sustaining community. Good morning, and welcome to the bigger balcony of First Congregational Church, which is what we call our virtual worship space. We are so glad that you are joining us this morning. My name is Sherry Nyberg, and I am the Minister of Christian Formation. Just a few announcements. Our worship service today has been pre-recorded, and we are joined by our conference ministers. And as we gather for worship, our sibling churches throughout the United States of the UCC are gathering and worshiping with us. Please check out the Wednesday and the Friday emails and to notice all the amazing things that are happening within our congregation and our community. And if you don't receive those emails, please contact the office at office at fccb.net to get connected. 
fill out the Worship Connect that you will find in the chat. And let us know that you're joining us today. And if you're holding prayers on your heart, please share them as well so that we can be praying with you. And if you hear nothing else today, please take in these words. No matter who you are or where you are, whether you come believing a little, a lot, or full of questions, you are welcome here. Thanks be to God. God of blessing, God of hope, God of each new day, I give you thanks for the warmth of a fireplace in a home, for those of us who have homes. And for those who don't, I give thanks for the people who don't pass by, for the people who give to support social services, for the people who reach out their hand. God, may someday all have homes where we might be out of the rain, out of the cold. God of grace, God of wonder, I ask your blessing on all of those who've been in the path of tropical storms and hurricanes these days, Florida and elsewhere. Prayers of safety for Greg B, who is in Honduras, and for all of Lutheran World Relief as they assess and support the Hondurans after Hurricane Ada. God of healing, God of hope. With Amelia B, I ask prayers for her cousin, Angela, and all who will be traveling with a group called Samaritan's Purse to care for people amidst armed conflict and refugee crisis in Armenia. May they know safety, direction for their leaders, teamwork, stamina. God of blessing, I ask prayers for Jeff B. recovering at home after being in the hospital last week. Prayers for the medical staff's wisdom in ways to move forward and healing, healing, healing. God, even though the election in the United States has passed, we continue to be in the midst of conflict and pain, siblings and parent and child disagreeing in ways that we don't know how to reform, come back together. So God, I ask wisdom for all of us how to come closer together while not giving up on the justice that you call us to. We find ways forward, ways that can be full of your blessing, your hope, your grace, and your wonder. All of the things that we ask of you for ourselves and all of your beloved creation. This I pray in your name. Amen. Welcome to this service of worship created by conference ministers and the general minister and president of the United Church of Christ. We offer this as nourishment for your soul. Hear our prayer for this time together. God of life, prepare our hands for a new and different touch, a touch of meeting, of awakening, of hope, of feeling. God of life, prepare our feet for a new and different path, a path of happenstance, of awareness, of courage, of mood. 
God of life, prepare our speaking for a new and different voice, a voice of engagement, of recognition, of potential, of regard. God of life, prepare our living for a new and different life, a life of gathering, of beginnings, of expectation, of import. Give us a bold and daring spirit as you create within us and among us the community that explores meaningful ways to move into your realm of kingdom closeness. Amen. Gather near, you gifted people, you beautiful people, you wonderful people. Gather near, for you are beloved. Gather even closer if you feel you are not. Come gather in this place, no place sanctuary, so that we can celebrate and honor the God of every place. We are both near and far, close and distant, together and apart, yet known and loved and treasured and held and blessed by a God who created us as a gift to the world. Gathered in this time of sanctuary, may we recognize and celebrate the gifts that are present here and ask for God's guidance as we discern how to share them. Gather near, you gifted people, you beautiful people, you wonderful people. Gather near here, you who are beloved. Gather even closer if you feel you are not because the good news for today is that you are. We are not alone. We are not alone. We are not alone. God is with us. We are not alone. We are not alone. We are not alone. Let us pray. 
I thank you, love, for the gift of this day, for its possibilities, for its challenges, for all that will draw me to you and your creation in the work and rest that is your gift to me. I thank you that the breath of life flows in and out of me as a gift not of my making, but of your design, that I may remember your inspiration and call in each moment of each second of each hour. Let me now attend with a thankful heart to your transforming work that I may be molded into whatever expression of love you desire. And in this, may your highest hope be my deepest desire, formed by you, O love, for the healing of the world. Amen. For it is as if a man going on a journey summoned his servants and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants came and settled accounts with them. The one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy servant. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents also came forward, saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy servant. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward, saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master replied, you wicked and lazy servant, you knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return, I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with ten talents. For to all those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless servant, throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This New Testament reading is from the Gospel of Matthew, and it's known as the parable of the talents. It has traditionally been interpreted as a message about responsible stewardship, since a talent is a rather large sum of money. The theme of the departing and returning master was dear to the early Christian community because it reminded them of Jesus' departure and expected return. The story has undergone several transformations in its journey from Jesus's original parable to the version that we now read in Matthew's gospel. A careful reading raises some disturbing elements that are often overlooked. One such element is the character of the master in the story. 
The absent master is called hard or severe. We can tell in his treatment of a third servant that he's a severe man. I think this calls into question the understanding by some that the master represents God. Also, to the Torah-abiding Jews to whom this story would have, have originally been told, the master's approval of receiving interest on the loans would have characterized him as no respecter of God's laws, laws which strongly discourage profit making from loans. There can be no doubt that when Jesus told the story, the morality of the absent master was questionable. It's therefore not helpful to identify the master as either Jesus or God. A more likely interpretation is that the hard master in this story is a characterization of the harsh social and economic realities that people faced at that time. The primary focus of this parable should be the behavior of the third servant who does nothing with the talents that he's been given. What he does because of his fear is what is brought into, into question by Jesus' story. He's rebuked for not acting boldly despite the danger. Cautious maintenance of the status quo is not applauded here in this story. The early church would have found this story very meaningful because of the persecution they faced. I think it must be just as meaningful today as we are called to think about how we worship together while keeping the body of Christ, the community, healthy and safe. The story is a call not to lose heart, but to act boldly for Christ. It provides both a social criticism of unjust times and a warning against being too cautious and encourages boldness and creativity in the face of systemic injustice. So that's the scripture. And I don't know about you, but this parable by Jesus has always been one that's left me, you know, scratching my head. <laughs> it seems to suggest some kind of investment crisis. The wealthy man gives each of three servants a very large sum of money. And believe me, it was a whole lot of money. A talent was a sum of money equal to roughly 23 years of wages for a day laborer. In today's currency, the sum granted to each servant would be somewhere at about, well, at least a half a million dollars. Like I said, a whole lot of money. And the servant who is not seen as trustworthy is the one who simply buried the whole shebang and returned to his master exactly what he had been given. And the master calls him wicked and lazy. He did not do anything with the talents that the master had provided him with. So he's cast out where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now, as I read this parable, I couldn't help but apply our modern definition of the word talents as gifts, not necessarily of cash, but rather of abilities, true gifts from God. Perhaps we can think of our talents as God's own currency. Reading the parable from that viewpoint, it seems that the untrusty, uh, untrustworthy servant is the one who does nothing with the gifts that he's been given. The first two servants take what they've been given and use it to increase the gift many times over. As I was thinking about talents as gifts from God, I couldn't help but think that all of us have gifts, that each of us has talents that God has graced us with, Maybe our gifts are not as extraordinary as the gifts that some others may have, but God-given talents of our own all the same. And I think that we all are called by God to use our gifts, our God-given talent, to move this world just a little bit further toward the kind of world that God envisioned at the creation. It seems to me today that this reading that speaks to us of talents, the gifts that we've been given by God, I think they challenge us to look at what we're doing with our talents, what we're doing with our gifts. 
So I'd like you to take a piece of paper, really, right now, take a piece of paper and write down what your gifts might be. And when you've got one or two listed, I want you to hang it on your refrigerator. And when you get a chance, talk about it with the person or the people uh, with whom you are sharing your safe space or phone a friend. Perhaps the two of you might strategize about how your gift could be used to build up the kingdom of God, how your gifts could be shared with the church in a way that would benefit this body of Christ. I'd like you to remind yourselves daily that God has gifted you and that your gifts can be used to partner with God to create the beloved community. You know, it seems as if we are all living in a time when God's kingdom seems so far away. You know, when things will be as the prophet Isaiah envisioned them, when the wolf shall dwell with the lamb and the leopard shall lie down with the kid and the calf and the young lion and the fatling together and a little child shall lead them. You know, we won't need to worry about hunger or oppression or racism in this world of God's kingdom. We won't have to worry about senseless gun violence in the streets perpetrated by our neighbors with too many guns or by the forces who take an oath to protect and serve. A time when all lives will matter because black lives finally do. You may think that what we do with our talents can't possibly make a difference in the world. But just imagine what the world would be if everyone used their God-given talent to make the world a better place. At that time, when that comes, Isaiah's prophecy will not seem so fantastical. As you leave this worship service, let us all remember with thankful hearts all that God has given to us and let us rededicate ourselves to building up God's realm here on earth. Amen. We know that in the midst of these challenging times that many people are facing different kinds of hardships. Among the difficulties that we are confronting amid our current global crises, job loss and financial distress loom large. Yet, in the midst of it all, God blesses us. Sometimes in moments of pain, it's hard for us to see that. But the parable of the talents and many other stories in Scripture remind us that God has indeed blessed us beyond our wildest imaginings. Today, we invite you to consider those blessings and to think of how deeply we are loved by God. We invite you to support our local churches, which are working harder than ever to respond to the challenges of ministry in 2020. We also invite you to support our conferences and our national setting, which are striving to walk with our local churches and equip them with the tools and the resources they need to minister well in this time. We invite you to reach out to our communities to meet the needs that are present wherever there is poverty, hunger, injustice, and inequity. We invite you to be generous as God is generous with us. Out of the abundance then that we have received from the generous hand of God, God calls us to give, not grudgingly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful, even a hilarious giver. In this moment of silence, we invite you to pause and give. As together we give thanks to God, who has given us all that we have.
and now receive this benediction. May we have grace to perceive the bounty of a generous God. May we have open hands and open hearts to share that abundance with abandon. May we have courage to see and not look away from the injustices that rob our siblings of their birthright as precious children of God. May we have the will to make the changes God desires for all God's people and for the healing of the earth. Let us not grow weary. And when we do, may God join us together so that many hands might make light work. And now may the blessings of God, our creator, redeemer, and sustainer be with you all. Amen. We invite you to stay on Facebook for a little while and chat in the comments. Share with each other what your day will bring or what you received from the message this morning. It'll be good to connect with you all. Blessings. <laughs>